Article 6, the Legislative Department, Section 1. The legislative power shall be vested in the Congress of the Philippines, which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives, except to the extent reserved to the people by the provision on initiative and referendum. 2. The Senate shall be composed of 24 senators who shall be elected at large by the qualified voters of the Philippines, as may be provided by law. 3. No person shall be a senator unless he is a natural-born citizen of the Philippines and, on the day of the election, is at least 35 years of age, able to read and write, a registered voter, and a resident of the Philippines for not less than two years immediately preceding the day of the election. 4. The term of office of the senators shall be six years and shall commence, unless otherwise provided by law, at noon on the 30th day of June next following their election. No senator shall serve for more than two consecutive terms. Voluntary renunciation of the office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of his service for the full term of which he was elected. 5. 1. The House of Representatives shall be composed of not more than 250 members, unless otherwise fixed by law, who shall be elected from legislative districts apportioned among the provinces, cities, and the metropolitan Manila area in accordance with the number of the respective inhabitants and on the basis of a uniform and progressive ratio, and those who, as provided by law, shall be elected through a party system of registered national, regional, and sectoral parties or organizations. 2. The party list representatives shall constitute 20 percentum of the total number of representatives, including those under the party list, for three consecutive terms after the ratification of this constitution, one half of the seats allocated to party list representatives shall be filled, as provided by law, by selection or election in the labor, peasant, urban poor, indigenous cultural communities, women, youth, and such other sectors as may be provided by law, except the religious sector. 3. Each legislative district shall comprise, as far as practicable, contiguous, compact, and adjacent territory. Each city with a population of at least 250,000 for each province shall have at least one representative. <clears throat> 4. Within three years following the return of every census, the Congress shall make a reapportionment re of legislative districts based on the standards provided in this section. 6. <clears throat> No person shall be a member of the House of Representatives unless he is a natural-born citizen of the Philippines and, on the day of the election, is at least 25 years of age, able to read and write, and, except the party list representatives, a registered voter in the district in which he shall be elected and a resident thereof for a period of not less than one year immediately preceding the day of the election. 7. The members of the House of Representatives shall be elected for a term of three years which shall begin unless otherwise provided by law at noon on the 30th day of June next following their election. No member of the House of Representatives shall serve for more than three consecutive terms. Voluntary renunciation of the office for any length of time shall not be considered as an interruption in the continuity of his service for the full term for which he was elected. Eight. Unless otherwise provided by law, the regular election of the Senators and the members of the House of Representatives shall be held on the second Monday of May. 9. In case of vacancy in the Senate or in the House of Representatives, a special election may be called to fill such vacancy in the manner prescribed by law, but the Senator or member of the House of Representatives thus elected shall serve only for the unexpired term. 10. The salaries of Senators and members of the House of Representatives shall be determined by law. No increase in said compensation shall take effect until after the expiration of the full term of all the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives approving such increase. 11. A senator or member of the House of Representatives shall, in all offenses punishable by not more than six years' imprisonment, be privileged from arrest while the Congress is in session. No member shall be questioned nor be held liable in any other place for any speech or debate in the Congress or in any committee thereof. 12. All members of the Senate and the House of Representatives shall, upon assumption of office, make a full disclosure of their financial and business interests. They shall notify the House concerned of a potential conflict of interest that may arise from the filing of a proposed legislation of which they are authors. 13. No Senator or member of the House of Representatives may hold any other office or employment in the government 
or any subdivision, agency, or instrumentality thereof, including government-owned or controlled corporations or their subsidiaries during his term without forfeiting his seat. Neither shall he be appointed to any office which may have been created or the emoluments thereof increased during the term for which he was elected. 14. No senator or member of the House of Representatives may personally appear as counsel before any court of justice or before the electoral tribunals or quasi-judicial and other administrative bodies. Neither shall he, directly or indirectly, be interested financially in any contract with or in any franchise or special privilege granted by the government or any subdivision, agency, or instrumentality thereof, including any government-owned or controlled corporation or its subsidiary during his term of office. He shall not intervene in any matter before any office of the government for his pecuniary benefit or where he may be called upon to act on account of his office. 15. The Congress shall convene once every year on the fourth Monday of July for its regular session unless a different date is fixed by law and shall continue to be in session for such number of days as it may determine until 30 days before the opening of its next regular session, exclusive of Saturdays, Sundays, and legal holidays. The President may call a special session at any time. 16. The, 1. The Senate shall elect its President and the House of Representatives, its Speaker, by a majority vote of all its respective members. Each House shall choose such other officers as it may deem necessary. 2. A majority of each house shall constitute a quorum to do business, but a smaller number may adjourn from day to day and may compel the attendance of absent members in such manner and under such penalties as such house may provide. 3. Each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two-thirds of all its members, suspend or expel a member. A penalty of suspension, when imposed, shall not exceed 60 days. 4. Each house shall keep a journal of its proceedings and from time to time publish the same, excepting such parts as may, in its judgment, affect national security, and the yes and nays on any question shall, at the request of one-fifth of the members present, be entered in the journal. Each house shall also keep a record of its proceedings. 5. Neither house during the sessions of the Congress shall, without the consent of the other, adjourn for more than three days, nor to any other place than that in which the two houses shall be sitting. 17. The Senate and the House of Representatives shall each have an electoral tribunal which shall be the sole judge of all contests relating to the election, returns, and qualifications of the respective members. Each electoral tribunal shall be composed of nine members, three of whom shall be justices of the Supreme Court to be designated by the Chief Justice, and the remaining six shall be members of the Senate or the House of Representatives, as the case may be, who shall be chosen on the basis of proportional representation from the political parties and the parties or organizations registered under the party list system represented therein. A senior justice in the electoral tribunal shall be its chairman. 18. There shall be a commission on appointments consisting of the President of the Senate as ex officio chairman, 12 senators and 12 members of the House of Representatives elected by each house on the basis of proportional representation from the political parties and parties or organizations registered under the party list system represented therein. The chairman of the commission shall not vote except in case of a tie. The commission shall act on all appointments submitted to it within 30 session days of the Congress from their submission. The commission shall rule by a majority vote of all the members. 19. The electoral tribunals and the commission on appointments shall be constituted within 30 days after the Senate and the House of Representatives shall have been organized with the election of the President and the Speaker. The commission on appointments shall meet only while the Congress is in session at the call of its chairman or a majority of all its members to discharge such powers and functions as are herein conferred upon it. 20. The records and books of accounts of the Congress shall be preserved and be open to the public in accordance with law, and such books shall be audited by the Commission on Audit, which shall publish annually an itemized list of amounts paid to and expenses incurred for each member. 21. The Senate or the House of Representatives or any of its respective committees may conduct inquiries in aid of legislation in accordance with its duly published rules of procedure. The rights of persons appearing in or affected by such inquiries shall be respected. 22. 
the heads of departments may, upon their own initiative, with the consent of the President or upon the request of either House, as the rules of each House shall provide, appear before and be heard by such House on any matter pertaining to their departments. Written questions shall be submitted to the President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House of Representatives at least three days before their scheduled appearance. Interpolations shall not be limited to written questions, but may cover matters related thereto. When the security of the state or the public interest so requires and the President so states in writing, the appearance shall be conducted in executive session. 23. 1. The Congress, by a vote of two-thirds of both houses in joint session assembled, voting separately, shall have the sole power to declare the existence of a state of war. 2. In times of war or other national emergency, the Congress may, by law, authorize the President for a limited period and subject to such restrictions as it may prescribe to exercise powers necessary and proper to carry out a declared national policy. Unless sooner withdrawn by resolution of the Congress, such powers shall cease upon the next adjournment thereof. 24. All appropriation, revenue, or tariff bills, bills authorizing increase of the public debt, bills of local application, and private bills, shall originate exclusively in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments. 25. 1. The Congress may not increase the appropriations recommended by the President for the operation of the government as specified in the budget. The form, content, and manner of preparation of the budget shall be prescribed by law. 2. No provision or enactment shall be embraced in the General Appropriations Bill unless it relates specifically to some particular appropriation therein. Any such provision or enactment shall be limited in its operation to the appropriation to which it relates. 3. The procedure in approving appropriations for the Congress shall strictly follow the procedure for approving appropriations for other departments and agencies. 4. A special appropriations bill shall specify the purpose for which it is intended and shall be supported by funds actually available as certified by the National Treasurer or to be raised by a corresponding revenue proposal therein. 5. No law shall be passed authorizing any transfer of appropriations. However, the President, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and the Heads of Constitutional Commissions may, by law, be authorized to augment any item in the General Appropriations Law for their respective offices from savings in other items of their respective appropriations. 6. Discretionary funds appropriated for particular officials shall be dispersed only for public purposes to be supported by appropriate vouchers and subject to such guidelines as may be prescribed by law. 7. If, by the end of any fiscal year, the Congress shall have failed to pass the General Appropriations Bill for the ensuing fiscal year, the General Appropriations Law for the preceding fiscal year shall be deemed re-enacted and shall remain in force and effect until the General Appropriations Bill is passed by the Congress. 26. 1. Every bill passed by the Congress shall embrace only one subject which shall be expressed in the title thereof. 2. No bill passed by either House shall become a law unless it has passed three readings on separate days and printed copies thereof in its final form have been distributed to its members three days before its passage, except when the President certifies to the necessity of its immediate enactment to meet a public calamity or emergency. Upon the last reading of a bill, no amendment thereto shall be allowed, and the vote thereon shall be taken immediately thereafter, and the yeas and nays entered in the journal. 27.1. Every bill passed by the Congress shall, before it becomes a law, be presented to the President. If he approves the same, he shall sign it. Otherwise, he shall veto it and return the same with his objections to the House where it originated, which shall enter the objections at large in its journal and proceed to reconsider it. If, after such reconsideration, two-thirds of all the members of such House shall agree to pass the bill, it shall be sent, together with the objections, to the other House, by which it shall likewise be reconsidered, and if approved by two-thirds of all the members of that house, it shall become a law. In all such cases, the votes of each house shall be determined by yeas and nays, and the names of the members voting for or against shall be entered in its journal. The President shall communicate his veto of any bill to the house where it originated within 30 days after the date of receipt thereof. Otherwise, it shall become a law as if he had signed it. 2. 
the President shall have the power to veto any particular item or items in an appropriation, revenue, or tariff bill, but the veto shall not affect the item or items to which he does not object. 28. 1. The rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. The Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. 2. The Congress may, by law, authorize the President to fix within specified limits and subject to such limitations and restrictions as it may impose tariff rates, import and export quotas, tonnage and wharfage use, and other duties, duties or imposts within the framework of the National Development Program of the Government. 3. Charitable institutions, churches, and personages or convents appurtenant thereto, mosques, non-profit cemeteries, and all lands, buildings and improvements actually directly and exclusively used for religious, charitable, or educational purposes shall be exempt from taxation. 4. No law granting any tax exemption shall be passed without the concurrence of a majority of all the members of the Congress. 29. 1. No money shall be paid out of the Treasury except in pursuance of an appropriation made by law. 2. No public money or property shall be appropriated, applied, paid, or employed directly or indirectly, for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, denomination, sectarian institution, or system of religion, or of any priest, preacher, minister, other religious teacher, or dignitary as such, except when such priest, preacher, minister, or dignitary is assigned to the armed forces or to any penal institution, or government orphanage, or leprosarium. 3. All money collected on any tax levied for a special purpose shall be treated as a special fund and paid out for such purpose only. If the purpose for which a special fund was created has been fulfilled or abandoned, the balance, if any, shall be transferred to the general funds of the government. 30. No law shall be passed increasing the appellate jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as provided in this Constitution without its advice and concurrence. 31. No law granting a title of royalty or nobility shall be enacted. 32. The Congress shall, as early as possible, provide for a system of initiative and referendum, and the exceptions, exceptions therefrom, whereby the people can directly propose and enact laws or approve or reject any act or law or part thereof passed by the Congress or local legislative body after the registration of pe petition therefore signed by at least 10% of the total number of registered voters of which every legislative district must be represented by at least 3% of the registered voters thereof.